In this video, I'm going to look at intermolecular forces. So before I go into explaining what intermolecular forces are, I just want to make a very, very important point. If you've got a giant ionic lattice, or a giant covalent lattice, or a giant metallic lattice, you've got very, very strong bonds between the particles that make up these lattices. So in a giant ionic lattice, we've got electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions. In giant covalent lattices, we've got co covalent bonds between the atoms. And in giant metallic lattices, we've got electrostatic attraction between positive metal ions and delocalized electrons. So these are very, very strong bonds and require quite a lot of energy to break them down. Intermolecular forces, on the other hand, exist between molecules. And we better just say, before we move any further, what do we mean by a molecule? And you can see there's the definition. A molecule is a small group of covalently bonded atoms. So going from left to right, we've got carbon dioxide, which basically just contains three covalently bonded atoms, and that's it. We've got ethanol, which contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine covalently bonded atoms. And we've got ammonia, which contains four covalently bonded atoms. So if you had a container full of carbon dioxide molecules, you'd basically have billions and billions of separate CO2 molecules. I've just got three there, just to make this point. So what intermolecular forces are, are these weak, very weak forces of attraction that occur between the molecules. So remember what we said at the start, covalent bonds are actually very, very strong. So if we were wanting to boil this or melt this, all we need to do is overcome these forces of attraction between the molecules. So you can see on this board, if you're wanting to break down an ionic lattice, a giant covalent lattice, or a giant metallic lattice, you're going to have to put in anywhere between 200 and 80 kilojoules per mole. So a lot of energy needs to go into these things to break them down. Intermolecular forces, on the other hand, are very much weaker. And so to separate these molecules, remember we're not breaking bonds here, we're just separating molecules, requires relatively a lot less energy. 